What's up, guys? Welcome to A Resource Life. My name is Chris. Thank you so much for joining me. I want to give you guys the five things I learned the most from this Wealth Real Estate Expo I went to with Prince Patel, my friend. Grant Cardone spoke, Elena Cardone, Gary Vaynerchuk, Sylvester Stallone, and a bunch of other celebrity speakers were there. Now, these kind of events I, I recognize are mostly pitch fests, and what that means is they get as many people in a room as possible, and they try to sell you something. Um, this is no different. There were 6,000 people there who paid $50 a pop. It would go all the way up to $2,000 a pop if you wanted to actually meet the people. I think you could pay also like $10,000 if you wanted to have lunch with, with Gary or Tony Robbins. So, But the majority of the people are going there for 50 bucks, and at the end, they pitch you on a $1,000 course for how to build wealth via real estate. Um, but the main thing is if you can only sell it one time, um, then don't sell it because it's not scalable and you can't create freedom without a little bit of scale. You need a multiplier, meaning if you're just a burger flipper, um, you can only earn as much money as the time allows you to do that. You're trading your time for flipping. But if you were to own a McDonald's, obviously you can own a second McDonald's, third McDonald's, other people are executing the basic work for you. The other side of that is a uh, real estate, right? Real estate can produce monthly income. There's maintenance required, but pretty much every single investment um, requires some form of maintenance, even like index investment Investing still requires a, a tiny bit of, of maintenance to make sure that it, it's, it's still working for you. But if you're just trading straight time for money as a reseller, you're just finding things and flipping it and you can only sell it one time. Chances are year after year after year, you're going to be making less and less money as the markets for these items shrink, unless you're an expert sourcer. And if you are, meaning you can find products and markets that are hot, then you should be spending the majority of your time doing that anyway, having other people help you with the fulfillment part. Now, this is really important because I consider that a profession and not a job, meaning year after year after year as a, re as a reseller, your eye might get better, your connections might get better. You might be doing the same work and earning more money if you're actually building relationships with the right people and the right suppliers and also the right buyers. There are plenty of resellers that don't retail. They don't have any customers, and those are called wholesalers. These are people who find good deals, pass them on to people who retail them. The exact same thing happens in real estate. The only difference is that real estate does have a passive income because you can earn monthly rental income month after month after month, and also the properties appreciate usually, right? So unless you resell rare vintage goods that actually appreciate with time, um, you're not getting that extra benefit. So my recommendation is to create a resale shop where you figure out the supply and the buyers and that is something that you can scale by just adding more stuff coming in or a faster or more reliable way of the products going out. This is um, basically marketing and then getting the product in. Get the right stuff, have a way to get rid of it. That's a business, you can grow that, that's scalable you, and that is awesome. So number two is Oh, the rest of the things I learned from the conference are all sort of related to the same thing, which is just in order to market, you need a lot of energy. Okay, energy is the main key. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk looks terrible. Okay, he's only 43 years old. He looks like he's 60 years old. He looks like he's completely beaten down. You can tell recently he is not taking care of his health. I don't know what his issue is. He doesn't look like he's eating very healthy because he's super pale. And he was not on his A game. In fact, the presentation he gave was a very run-of-the-mill Gary Vaynerchuk speech. It wasn't like when he's firing on all cylinders, he basically just takes Q&A the whole time because most of the time you can get the basic, if you're not making money online, you're an idiot speech from all of his content online. Obviously, we need to be earning money online. We all know that. Um, but how do we do that? The actionable stuff um, was lacking because he was just super tired, you could tell. And he, I think he was in Seattle yes, two days ago, flew in here to give a quick speech and flying back to New York. This is an insane lifestyle. But I want to contrast that with Grant Cardone. Okay, Grant Cardone is 61 years old, doesn't look a day over 40. He's jacked. He's super muscular. He took off his shirt because somebody was like, can you please market my shirt? And he's like, I'll take care of you right now. Took his shirt off, put his other shirt on. He has the physique of a 25-year-old. The guy is in fantastic shape. You can tell he probably has a nutritionist and a personal trainer and probably a chef. Now, that's pretty difficult, clearly, but the results of that are just uncanny. He's just as busy as Gary Vaynerchuk. He's working nonstop. And on top of that, he has an incredible supportive partner. 
in the long run, if I was going to bet um, on who's going to be a happier person, I would say Grant Cardone all the way because Elena's right there by his side taking care of him uh, along the way. And that is, it's hard to match a husband and wife combo on the same, same wavelength. Of course, I know Gary and his wife um, are on the same wavelength too, but they're not working on the same project. So it's really, really powerful looking at the energy and the health aspect. When I came back from the conference, I'm really taking my health a lot more seriously. I already take it very seriously, but I got home. My wife and I are really going to get into meal planning because we've tried to figure out what it would cost to have a nutritionist trainer. And um, and the reason why you'd want that is so that you could build in the variety, meaning you don't have to eat the same thing over and over and over again if you have that. But that's a luxury that we can't afford yet because we're thinking it's probably going to be between 100 and 200 grand a year to have somebody take care of that for you as far as like your your fitness and your your food to the point where you're not even thinking about it. Um, another example of that is Logan Paul. He's a YouTuber getting ready with a, for a fight and he just he says, oh, once I wake up, my life's pretty much automated. And that totally makes sense to me. If you want to operate at this insane level where you're making millions of dollars a year, you can't be wasting any energy on eating, um, working out, or staying healthy sleep. You need people to help you with that. You're talking about teams of three to five people that do that. Logan Paul spends a hundred grand a month on just taking care of himself. That is amazing. And I think LeBron James spends a million dollars a year or more just on physique, making sure that he's healthy. And you guys know The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, his gym is actually flown with him. When he travels to a new place, he brings the gym with him. Like that's how dedicated these guys are to their health and energy levels to keep that insane energy throughout the day. They have to have that really high health level. So um, for us, since we are not at that level, more practically, we are going to have to eat a lot of similar meals to achieve the same thing. Um, there was also a billionaire on stage which who kind of shocked me and rocked me to my core, which he was saying that, think about this. Okay, I'm a billionaire. Um, I'll put his, his name in the description below. Really nice Indian guy. Um, he mentioned that, look, there's no money in keeping people healthy. Okay, if people were healthy and happy, we couldn't sell them anything. People who are unhappy and sick are basically a lifetime subscription of stuff to sell them to. So the United States is built on an economy. There's not that much culture other than like a great barbecue, in my opinion. There's not a ton of American stuff. In fact, all that is dying. It's being replaced by instant gratification stuff that sucks. I wish it was more like the 50s where everything that the United States manufactured and stood for was more American and more cool instead of right now, it's just 100% capitalism. But people are getting unhealthier and unhealthier and it's on purpose. Like if you go to a normal grocery store here where we live, let me know in the comment section if this is true for you. Smash that like button if this content is useful. But if you go to a Safeway or a Lucky Grocery Market here, every single thing in the store is processed garbage. It's, it's all trash. Trying to find really healthy food is very difficult. Even water is processed here. So it's difficult to get stuff that's not making you sick, right? On top of that, the marketing that everyone sees every single day is basically telling you that you're ugly and um, that you're not going to be satisfied until you do this thing. And just think about the, the fact that that's a lifetime subscription for all these companies. If you were in charge of trying to make money, if everybody was happy and healthy, what is there really to sell them? And that really, you can tell. Um, the people who were the happiest that I met at the conference, just those two things. Very happy, very healthy hard to sell those people stuff. They're just naturally frugal because they're not chasing. Okay, the people who are the unhealthiest looking, they're the ones spending the most money. If you look at the people who are spending the money on the Gucci, the Louis Vuitton, whatever, the, the amazing sneakers, most of those people at the conference, surprisingly, were not fit and they didn't look happy. They looked very stressed out and overstimulated. So it just made me take a step back because I think that you need to understand being healthy and happy is not very expensive. It's sort of the opposite of this constant chasing. Okay, next thing is number four, which is more people equal more productivity. This is something I noticed that people with the families have more property than people who are single. Like, why is that? Why are people that have more responsibility just not much more productive? I think that really is just the main reason because you meet people who are single 
that also are very productive, but usually it's because they're responsible for other people. Um, they might not be married, but they're still responsible for a cousin or their mom or whatever, and they're just motivated to take care of that person. So their, their lives are more scheduled, they're more regimented. Um, for myself, I struggle with making my schedule really clean, but when it is, my productivity goes through the roof because I just get into the routine day in, day out, doing similar stuff, you really start getting ahead when your schedule gets really, really, really tight. Um, and you can see how much these crazy entrepreneurs value their time. Like literally, there were people that paid $2,000 for a picture with one of these people and a quick conversation. And when you do that, you start attracting business to you. And that's incredible. Imagine if you are Walmart, right? How many products want to get their products on the shelves of Walmart? It's like, endless people trying to put stuff into your store because they know if they sell it in your store, they're going to be successful. So you guys need to run your resale operations to the point where people want to do business with you. And then productivity really comes from people having people around you. If you're working by yourself all day with no responsibility, chances are you're not very productive. Okay, number five, this one is crazy. This one is that most people are crippled by judgment. I 100% agree with this. Um, I went to Posh Fest last week and I said, wow, a lot of you look much better in person. You need to upgrade your, um, your lighting or whatever you do for social media because the tr for me, the truth is on social media, the reason that you need to use it is if you are the product, okay? If you are not the product, you don't need to use social media, okay? The people I know that are really successful in business, their product is really popular and then they market the product really well with really great photos and really great descriptions and features because the product is their actual product. If you're on social media, you are the product, right? So let me give you an, an example of where I don't get offended. I've, I get... I've get you know a fair amount of comments saying that I should get Botox, saying that I should really I should fix my teeth, I should be it should dress a lot nicer, I should do it in a better studio, and it doesn't hurt my feelings. It's true. Okay, if I looked better, most of my audience is white, so Caucasian, and most of my audience is female, right? If I catered better to that, my my sales would go up. More people would watch this channel, more people would buy from my store because that makes sense. I'm actually surprised, you know, now that I'm not making any Poshmark content. Um, I, I'm looking at my sales and actually, when I was making a lot of Poshmark content, my Poshmark closet was busier. I didn't know that until I actually went to Poshfest and people were saying, oh, I bought X and X things from your closet um, when you were more active. But now, obviously, you're not, I'm not selling as much on Poshmark anymore. So I, I haven't been doing much pushing, but it makes sense to me now. When you are doing the marketing online, I almost think that if you want to be on social media, it's kind of a waste to not actually hook up your store and be part of it. But if you are going to be on social media, honestly, it's fake. And that, I'm, I'm okay with that. I don't have an issue with that because I think that you shouldn't be crippled. You shouldn't be crippled by your presentation, by how people judge you. And if you, because that is going to prevent you from doing marketing. And it's important if you're going to be in online sales to do the, to do the proper marketing, right? This is, this is why um, stores hire models. This is why stores spend millions of dollars on beautiful stores. They even, they, they care about what the scent is when you walk in, the lighting. Everything matches a certain vibe because they want you to buy the product. That's all marketing. So I really want people to, um, I think that the judgment comes from, worrying about what other people say instead of worrying about your customer. Okay, so for example, if you are on Instagram just for the community part, then why would, why would you care about makeup or lighting or any of that? doesn't matter because that's not the point. The point is to be a real person and just share your experiences with your friends and family. In that case, the, the goal would be to be as authentic as possible, be as real as possible so people can relate to you, right? If your goal is to sell your product on social media, then glam it up. Be totally different. Be what you think your target market wants to see. Okay, this is just reality. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm also going to to stay away from talking about people's physical appearances because I realize that's a very touchy subject that you probably shouldn't talk about. But I'm just going to be real and say that if you are trying to use social media to sell your product, which I see a lot of, a lot of especially Poshmark clients doing, or there's a lot of fashion sellers. Most of the people who watch my channel are fashion sellers. You are the product. If you're going to be modeling your stuff and you want to go that route, then it, it, would, it wouldn't hurt you to spend some extra time to look a little bit different on those photos. Now, I want to take one more step back 
and say that. For some higher end customers, that's actually a bad thing. You want to have the vibe of looking like that person, but you don't want to actually model the clothing. So I have to shout out Maya. She was saying that as a female buyer, she does not like it when the person running the store actually is modeling the clothing. I agree with that. Me personally as a buyer, I don't need the actual person selling it to be the model. Um, I don't mind, of course, if you're using a stock photo with an actual model. That's great because I want to see what it looks like on a person. That's, I understand that part and the 3D model of a mannequin. Um, but if you're going to go for straight, um, you know, you are the brand, you're trying to sell a lifestyle, then of course, you, you definitely need to look different. So that's my opinion on that. Um, just spending some time at the conference with Prince walking around, people watching, just seeing what people are up to. You can just really tell the people that are on schedules, people that go in, they're going to a specific conference to learn one specific skill, talk to one specific person about one thing. Those are very different people than people that just go there and don't know what they're looking for. Those are the people that get sold the $1,000 course. Also, one more observation, which was pretty crazy. I'm going to give you guys some statistics that kind of blew my mind. 37% um, of people are going to work until the day they die. Um, they're never going to retire um, because they're never earning enough money. Um, that's pretty sad. So I think that everyone should really think about this. Try to build something that scales. If you can only sell it one time, that's not going to scale. Okay, you have to build a system. Um, so you can build a resale shop that sells one-off items. That's, that's what I recommend. That's what I'm doing. Um, but that's something that you need to do to get out of the rat race because you really don't want to work until the day you die. Then they said 70% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. Um, somebody said if, if you're walking around with $10 in your pocket, you're better off than half the people in America if you have no debt. These kind of statistics really scare you and freak you out. Um, but it, it definitely makes sense to me because the people that were there were not young. It was the different. It's different than Poshfest was mostly millennials. Most people were, were under 30 um, or maybe under 35. Um, so I, I think the cutoff for millennials is 1980. So they, at this point, they would be 29. So under 30. Um, is that right? Um, I think... Wait, wait, 1980. Oh, no. I, I actually... It depends, but I think that right around 30 years old and younger was what the Poshmark um, audience was. And then when you come to um, this real estate expo, I would say that I don't think people were necessarily doing that well. It seemed like a lot of the people were just living paycheck to paycheck. And I would say that the age went all the way up to 50 and 60. There are people there They just had a regular job making minimum wage, living paycheck to paycheck that are 50, 50 and 60 years old. These are the type of people with no nest egg, um, no retirement, in a difficult situation. And you can tell their days are not scheduled. They don't know which session they want to go to. They're not organized. And these are the same people that are buying the $1,000 course. Um, totally, I mean, it's kind of sad in the sense that that's why my course is 35 bucks because I don't want it to be something that's debilitating for somebody financially and it's not predatory. I kind of feel like these conferences are, they remind me of those MLM pitches. If you guys have ever been to one where they get in a room and get everybody excited and dancing and they give away a BMW or something and then they get every, you know, half the people in the room to spend 500 to $1,500 on something, it kind of reminded me of that. So the people who are doing very well, very focused, very schedule driven, not necessarily skilled. Okay, and then I think that's important to recognize. You don't have to be crazy skilled. You just have to do the same thing over and over again, have a, a nice little set schedule. And I don't know, it was, it was pretty remarkable because for me, I don't only judge happiness on, based on money. It's only 1%, one part of the equation. Um, you know, so that's, I don't know, just looking at these things, let me know, guys, what you think of your opinion of these types of events, where your reselling career is going, what can you do to improve your schedule or the people around you, let me know. You guys can always email me at chris at Thank you, everybody. Talk to you later. Take care.